It's Mock Draft Monday here on Chat Sports. We're about to break down my latest one with the NFL regular season now in the books. Before we do that, though, make sure you guys are subscribed. If you want constant updates on everything going on around the NFL Draft this offseason, this is the channel to subscribe to. Hit the big red button right now. Tom Downey here for Chat Sports, and I want to get this out of the way right off the front. The draft order for this mock draft is based on the current draft order. So if you're a playoff team complaining about where your team is, is drafting this mock draft, don't. You're wrong. It's just the current one. Let's get into pick number one, the Jacksonville Jaguars here. I've got them going Aiden Hutchinson. I think there are three really good names in play here. Hutchinson, Kayvon Thibodeau, Evan Neal. I don't think we'll know which route the Jags end up going until they figure out what they're going to do with Trent Baalke. Hutchinson drawing plenty of buzz as the potential number one overall pick. The same is true of Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon, the edge rusher as well. These two players, Hutchinson, Thibodeau, fair or not, they're different prospects, different players, of course, will be attached at the hip throughout their NFL careers. Who ends up being better? Better get it right if you're a team drafting early. All right, the Texans at number three. By the way, Lions, they're going edge at two. Forgot to mention that. Texans, I think, would love an edge rusher. They don't really need an offensive lineman. They do need cornerback help, though. So Derek Stingley, who wasn't as great the past two years as he was in year one, I do think could make quite a bit of sense for Houston, number three overall. I think Jacksonville, Houston, both those teams, probably trade down. Number four, the Jets. Stingley's off the board. Do you want to reach for one of the other corners? The edges aren't there. Assuming you roll it back with Mekhi Beck, you don't really need another offensive lineman. So I'm going to go with who I think is the best prospect in this year's draft. That's Kyle Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame. The value is lower, but the Jets do have two top ten picks to play around with. Number five, the Giants would love this outcome. Evan Neal out of Alabama. The offensive line desperately needs help. Neal, I think, could play all over the line like he did throughout his career at Alabama. Get yourself an impact player. There will be plenty of Giants draft coverage, by the way, on our Giants YouTube channel right there, bottom of your screen. Check the description, by the way. I'll put all of the team channels we have here at Chat Sports in there so you guys can go subscribe to your favorite one. But first, the question of the day. Who ends up being the number one overall pick? I'll throw these three names in there for Jacksonville, barring a trade. A.H. for Aiden Hutchinson, K.T. for Kayvon Thibodeau, E.N. for Evan Neal, or if you think it's somebody else altogether, type in O for other. Let me know, of course, who it is in the comments. If you get the ad break here on YouTube, head down to that pinned comment and let me know. Shoot your shot. Make your predictions right now. The Panthers at six, they could look at a quarterback. I don't think there's one quite worth it at this point. But Charles Cross had himself a fantastic year for Mississippi State. And that Panthers offensive line, it was bad this past year. They've got one good tackle, Taylor Motten. How about a second one here in Cross? The Giants, I let uh, Giants report host, uh, or Giants now host Marshall Green make this pick. He wanted the center. Tyler Linderbaum. Now there's some buzz that, oh, he's not the strongest guy. He's not as good as Quentin Nelson at, for, as a center versus a guard in Nelson. I think he's awesome. The Giants, they need offensive line help. And Linderbaum is one of my favorite prospects in this year's draft. He's a stud. Whoever takes him is going to get a damn good football player. So who is your favorite, not best, favorite NFL draft prospect this year. Hamilton is my best, but Linderbaum is one of my favorite ones, and I want to hear from you guys as well in the comments. Number eight, George Karloftis. He's constantly mocked in round one. I'm going to be a little bit lower on Karloftis than a lot of the people out there. I'm not convinced he ends up being the elite edge rusher prospect that some people want to make him out to be. I don't think he's going to end up being in my top three. Maybe he tests well at the combine. It makes me feel better about him. Good player. I just worry there's a little bit too much of A.J. Epinesa in him. I want a little bit more athletic ability 
than what I think Carl Loftus brings, but it's a huge need for Atlanta. Number nine, the Denver Broncos, Ika McWanu. You could go quarterback here. I suspect that will get sorted out elsewhere for Denver beyond just the draft. And Ekwanu, by the way, I love him. I think he's a fantastic prospect as, I think, a tackle. You play him on the right side since you've got some free agents coming up on that side of the, of that side of the line for Denver at the right tackle spot. Some teams are going to view him as a guard. And I, I say don't be stupid. Play him at tackle. Dude's a stud. The Jets at number 10 get the corner they could have gone with at four. You get two high-end impact secondary players. Andrew Booth here out of Clemson. I think he's going to test very well at the Combine as a, I think it's a very deep and top-heavy cornerback class. Jets got to find one early to pair with Bryce Hall, who I'm a big fan of, but I think is maybe more of a CB2 in the NFL. There will be a ton of, and I mean a ton of NFL draft, or NFL draft, NFL draft, Jesus, Tom, NFL draft prop bets over on BetUS, and you can get a 125% deposit bonus when you head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code NFL daily. Put five bucks on anything that is the number one overall pick. And bet on the playoffs as well. Tons of betting to be had and money to be made at chatsports.com slash bet. First QB off the board, Matt Corral out of Ole Miss goes to Washington. I think it'd be a good fit in the Washington football team offense. And I like Corral. I don't love this quarterback uh, draft class overall. Mac Jones would have been my quarterback one compared to all these players. But Corral's got a quick release, upside. I like him. I think he'd be a good investment for the football team who needs a franchise guy. Number 12, Kenny Pickett to the Vikings. I'll go off script here a little bit. Um, new regime coming in for Minnesota. That tells me Kirk Cousins is not going to be long for this organization. I don't see how he sticks around long term. So if you're Minnesota, if you like Kenny Pickett, go take him. Now, maybe the new regime won't want to commit to a rookie quarterback that quickly, but I think it does make some sense for the Vikings. Number 13, Garrett Wilson, the Ohio State product to the Cleveland Browns. They do not have a number one receiver. And if they're going to roll it back with Baker Mayfield, you better get him some help. Wilson, I think, has immense upside and a very strong, as I think it's going to be for years to come, wide receiver class in this year's NFL draft. Number 14, DeMarvin Leal, who I think is going to slide a bit further, but I actually like his fit. In Baltimore, I wonder if Leal and uh, and Carl Loftus won't be as highly hyped come actual draft time, but we're sticking in the here and the now. Clayus Campbell is not going to be around forever. I wonder if Leal could just slot in into that spot on the Ravens' defensive line. Of course, he's not quite the same type of player because Campbell's a borderline Hall of Famer. Maybe don't set that high of expectations. All right, Philadelphia now, number 15 overall via the Miami Dolphins here. David Ajabo, the edge rusher from Michigan. I was underwhelmed by him against Georgia, but the upside is here. Edge rusher remains in need for the Philadelphia Eagles. I have them focused heavily on defense in this mock draft. Number 16 from the Colts. Thanks, Jags. Devin Lloyd, the linebacker out of Utah. The linebackers in general fell in this mock draft for me. That's how stuff tends to happen sometimes. But Lloyd is a three-down player. Can impact in the run, impact in the pass, and as a pressure player. You need that if you're drafting a linebacker in round one. It is your turn to be a hater in the comment section. Who is the most overrated NFL draft prospect. Drop a name for me. Be mean in the comments. Number 17, my favorite team player fit in the NFL draft right now. Of course, it's only January, so it's early. Jordan Davis, the monster nose tackle out of Georgia, stops the run incredibly well. And the Chargers, that run D, is cheeks. You bring in Jordan Davis... That defense gets a lot better. I adore this fit player team-wise. I also like this one a lot. Jamison Williams out of Alabama to the Saints. Who is the Saints' home run threat, the playmaker, vertical and speed-wise, on the roster right now? 
Alvin Kamara can make some plays, but he's not a go threat. Michael Thomas, if he's healthy, is, is slant boy, which he does wonders, so it's fine. Marquez Callaway, Trickon Smith, nah. Jamison Williams would be a big boost to that offense. Number 19, another corner. A bit light early on, by the way, which is, hey, that's how the board falls sometimes. Ahmad Sauce Gardner. You can't be bad if your nickname is Sauce and you're a corner. There are some speed concerns around him. I'm a fan. This would be a great pick by Philly. The Steelers, who snuck in the postseason, they do not have their quarterback of the future, and frankly, Big Ben hasn't played that well anyway. Malik Willis would bring something very different to what Pittsburgh has had the past many of the years. He is a mobile, dual-threat, dynamic QB. You have a good head coach in Mike Tomlin. If you draft Malik Willis, you don't maybe have to play him right away. You can give him some time because he does need it. He is a raw, high-upside type of prospect. He will need time to develop. I've only got three quarterbacks going in round one. Sorry, Carson Strong. Sorry, Sam Howe. Sorry, Desmond Ritter, I guess. I didn't put any trades in here. So over or under 3.5 quarterbacks drafted in round one. Type in O for over or U for under. The Patriots, number 21 here. This is now, of course, the playoff uh, teams. Drake London. I'm a big Drake London fan. I thought he made the USC quarterback tandem look way better than what they actually were. Vertical threat, outside, can run over the middle too. I think he is in contention to be wide receiver one in this year's class. The Dolphins, this pick via the 49ers. Kenyon Green. Green is a unique prospect because he played everywhere but center on the Aggies offensive line this year. It's kind of crazy. He's had a bunch of snaps everywhere. So I don't know where he slots in right away for Miami, but I bet they can find a spot for him on a no line that really needs the help. Chris Olave, number 23 here out of Ohio State to the Las Vegas Raiders. Not a one-to-one -one Henry Ruggs replacement, of course, but as a smooth route runner for a team that needs some more help at wide receiver beyond Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller, I think Olave is a logical fit here in the middle, back end of round one for the Raiders. I love this fit, too. Kair Elam slides down to 24. I could see him going top 15 in this year's draft class, but the corners and linebackers were the ones who kind of fell a little bit more. Cardinals could use some more cornerback help. Elam, I think it would be a nice addition for Arizona. The Cincinnati Bengals going small school out of Northern Iowa. Trevor Penning, who has drawn plenty of round one buzz. Prime more over to the right side, put him there because Riley Reef is, is aging and might not be back. Joe Burrow has not had the best offensive line, and he's still balling out. Jamar Chase pick worked out. Now go find some more O-line help. I wanted to put a name we haven't had in these mock drafts yet. That is Zion Johnson, the offensive guard out of Boston College. The Bills, I have not loved their offensive guard play so far this year as they enter the postseason. Johnson can slot right in and maybe help them run the football a little bit better it's maybe more of a round two guy, but back end of round one, that's normally who you end up drafting. The Lions, their second pick, this one via the Rams, Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. Uh, we praise the sun god, Amon Ra St. Brown, who was awesome this year for the Lions. They need some more receiver help, though, even if Josh Reynolds does come back. Burks and St. Brown, that's a really fun young duo at wide receiver. Number 28, Nicobe Dean out of Georgia. Why not go two linebackers in a row? Now, Parsons is almost a pass rusher at this point for the Cowboys, but Dean is the type of off-ball linebacker you can draft in round one, especially back end of round one. I don't know if he falls that far, but given the Cowboys don't have much at the position beyond maybe a Jabril Cox coming off of injury, Cox and Dean could work pretty well at linebacker. The Chiefs, Jermaine Johnson out of Florida State. He's getting some round one buzz right now. Very intriguing prospect, stuck on a bad football team. I don't know if Melvin Ingram comes back. The Chiefs do need more pass rush help. And, hey, you know what? Maybe they just have fun and go take a receiver here instead. Number 30, Trent McDuffie out of Washington. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, their cornerback room will be okay. But looking ahead, 
going to have some free agents. Probably can't bring back all of them. And McDuffie's a good prospect. Tennessee, Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. He made uh, the Penn State QBs like Sean Clifford look way better than what they actually are. Julio Jones, last year of his deal, might not be back. Even if he is, they're pretty thin at that position. Then number 32, Trayvon Walker, the other Georgia defensive lineman who I wouldn't be stunned if he went in or before Jordan Davis. I think there is that level of upside with the latest in a long line of great Georgia prospects this year. So grade this mock draft for me, A, B, C, D, or F. How you feeling about how I did? I want only positive comments, but head down and grade me. Now, before you go, I go above and beyond, so boost up my grade here. Bears, Seahawks, Colts, Niners, Rams have no first-round pick this year. But I got you guys mock draft picks anyway. David Bell out of Purdue to the Bears. Get them some receiver help with Allen Robinson maybe not coming back. Sean Ryan, discount Elijah Vera Tucker, maybe a right tackle for Seattle. I think that's an area of need this offseason. Nicholas petit Friere out of Ohio State to the Colts. Eric Fisher might not be back. Darion Kendrick. Very talented, off the field red flags though for San Francisco out of Georgia, formerly of Clemson as well. Very talented player, and the Niners really need cornerback help. And then the Rams, pick 100. I don't know. How about Channing Tindall, another Georgia player, because why not? They got so many great defensive players, and linebacker off ball is a need for Georgia. So who did I leave out of my mock draft? Only 32 plus random guys for the latter rounds there as well. Who did I leave out? Let me know in the comments. Some other first round options I like but did not find room for. Carson Strong of Nevada. Drake Jackson out of USC. Kinsley and uh, Igberry out of South Carolina. Both USC's on there. That's fun. Daxton Hill, the safety slash nickelback out of Michigan. And Jaquan Brisker, a safety as well from Penn State. 